Today I will be showing you uh, what needs to be done to metal framework before applying an opaque and uh, after that ceramics. Uh, this phase of, uh, of the work uh, requires special attention uh, because uh, the surface of the metal that we will be uh, finishing uh, has to be has to be treated uh, so it will be non-contaminating when it will be um, receiving the uh, straight of opaque uh, in the oven and uh, being fused to it so uh, here I have on my bench two cases we've seen the seven unit bridge already once uh, in our videos this has been applied in the mouth and uh, it came back from the dental studio, from the dentist, which was satisfied with, uh, with the try-in in the mouth. So, uh, um, till now, uh, nothing has really been done to this case, uh, and uh, now starts uh, uh, the real big job for it. But um, this will be uh, too long of a procedure to be brought home video, so... Uh, um, to make this uh, more understandable, I have a, a single unit case, which is this uh, second molar. And uh, what will be done on this second molar is uh, what the seven unit will be treated as. That means that uh, every burr, every piece of attention, everything that, uh, uh, that needs to be done for this molar uh, is transferred as know-how also uh, for the seven units. So uh, uh, to make the video short, uh, we will be taking uh, this case uh, as uh, in exam. Uh, what I do use when I finish metal is always my binoculars. This is a 3.5 per of dental um, of Zan Dental, and uh, and it's pretty much powerful and good enough for uh, for the kind of production that I do. Uh, we will be using also uh, a non-contaminating disc. Uh, this is the first the first part that will be finished, and uh, then we will be using also uh, carbide burrs, a set of carbide burrs. Uh, we do not use what uh, many dental studios do use, and that means uh, stones because I do believe that a stone always leaves on, on the surface some kind of contamination which uh, will not uh, give a hundred percent bond during the fusing process between opaque and um, and the metal's surface. Uh, to not delay too much on this discussion because we can discuss about metals uh, for a very long time uh, I will say that the interface that there is between the opaque and the metal uh, is, at my opinion, uh, best uh, for the fusing process when these kind of burrs uh, have treated the surface. Uh, the surface after the casting, uh, it's, uh, it's opaque and uh, irregular and needs to be brought into a very smooth uh, smooth and calmed um, aspect uh, and then needs to go through a sandblasting and uh, decontaminating with, uh, with steam uh, to be completely clean and ready to, uh, to go to the next uh, procedure. Anyway, uh, that's enough uh, for uh, for talking uh, now we will uh, rather work on this unit uh, this case is not articulated it will be all hand uh, articulated and uh, it's the best way to see spaces and um, and we'll take it from here okay so uh, first thing I do when I get this case uh, I I check what kind of metal I'm using so I look at that on the prescription and this case is done with an on precious metal and any kind of metal I'll be using uh, I'll be using a dust collector I'll make sure I'm wearing my uh, 
uh, the, the right uh, the right outfit, my lab outfit, uh, my lab cap, so dust particles don't come in my hair. Um, you want to make sure uh, you keep away from this kind of dust. And uh, I get my calibers because uh, measurements are going to be important in this procedure. Uh, I begin to look uh, how counter, uh, how much room will I have for porcelain in a counter contest. And uh, I also uh, start uh, making, uh, giving myself an idea on uh, occlusion and, uh, and uh, the spaces that are left for occlusion. So uh, on the base of all this information, I will be able to, uh, uh, to know what kind of spaces and where to give space. And of course, this comes with experience and uh, after finishing a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of units. What do you want to really be careful since these, uh, um, since these structures are already thin is to not go uh, too heavy on them because uh, if you put a hole, then uh, you have to start the job all over unless you want to uh, repair it by doing some soldering job. But in these cases, I, I do not like to solder uh, holes unless it's a laser solder and, uh, and we've seen, you know, uh, on another video that I have published. Uh, how good a laser solder can work, but actually I do not know if it's good enough once you put the porcelain on it. Anyway, I would rather have a structure, a framework, which has no holes, is holeless, doesn't have any holes in it, and uh, I will start now to finishing the surface with a uh, with this kind of disc, which is a non-contaminating disc, it's uh, uh, non-contaminated because the particle of this disc uh, is aluminum oxide, which is a non-contaminating material for uh, for the structure, and it's bonded together. It's all these particles are bonded together with uh, with uh, a glass procedure. So uh, before starting to grind on the metal. First thing I will do, I will check my coping with my calibers and uh, check and see here and there what kind of uh, measurements do I find. And I can see it, you know, right here. Let me see if I can point the light. I've put, a, in this case, I put for you a, a lens. You can see here on the caliber that we are pretty thick in this point. And then let's see here if we if I can show you. Okay, here we're about under half a millimeter. And uh, we look on occlusion areas also. It's about there we are. It's about zero eight. And this is very important to check all around your coping before starting your grinding because if you have any thin spots, then uh, you can mark them. And know that when you will be grinding, you have to be very careful. So uh, this is what I do with my calibers.